What's up guys, if you're interested in getting sweet altars like these every month, you can do so by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com slash it resolves. What's going on guys and welcome to another episode of the crack pack series today We are opening up for the first time on this series the very new brand new core set 2020 a lot of really fantastic cards in this set uh, I'm actually I'm enjoying the set quite a lot. I've been playing a lot of sealed on arena Haven't done much draft so but hopefully that'll translate okay into uh, into this pack opening We will be doing our uh, our normal thing where we hopefully figure out what our first round pick will be uh, there are a lot of fantastic cards in this, so hopefully we get something cool. Our first card here is Lava Kim Brawler. It's a 2-4 for 3 and a red, and when it attacks, it gets plus 1, plus 0 until the end of the turn for each elemental you control. Worth noting, that does count itself, so when it attacks, if it's the only creature on your field, it's still going to get that plus 1 bo uh, boost to be a 3-4, uh, which is pretty good. Obviously, you need 2 or 3 elementals to really make this worth it, but... Uh, she does kind of boost herself up, which is nice. I really like this card. There's a really cool combo with a goblin in this set that kind of lets her be unblockable, and then all of a sudden she swings for a million. Really, really sweet stuff. Uh, I found her to be very, very above average for a four drop, uh, if not one of the best common four drops in the set. Absolutely love her. Uh, I don't know if she's first pickable, to be honest, so we'll see what the rest of the pack holds, but not a bad start, to be honest. Uh, Moreland Inquisitor is a 2-2 for one and a white. You can pay two and a white, and it gains first strike until the end of the turn. Uh, this is just a really serviceable, pretty good two drop. Uh, it's a 2-2 for two, so it's a bear right off the bat, and then has conditional first strike as long as you leave up the mana for it. So, uh, honestly, just a bear with upside is really, really solid. Not as good as the Lava Kim Brawler, obviously, but... Uh, still really nice if you're in a white deck and you're looking for curve consideration picks. This is a perfectly good one to use. Honestly, just a really decent two drop. Uh, Blade Brand is a uh, instant for one and a black, and target creature gains death touch until the end of the turn. You also draw a card. I found this to be a pretty good combat trick. Uh, I won't say it's amazing, but it is pretty good. Uh, generally speaking, this just means one of your one of your creatures is going to trade off with the opponent's creature, but on the onset, you also get to draw a card, and you usually get to trade up on those creature values. Uh, and so it's definitely worth it to run maybe one of these in a draft deck. I think it's perfectly fine in that sense. Uh, honestly, the fact that this draws you a card is one of the biggest upsides, in my opinion. But I would say this is like a conditional removal spell that also draws you a card, and that's great value. Uh, I wouldn't first pick it, but it is a good card. Uh, Mammoth Spider, a uh, very classic card, is a 3-5 for 4 and a green with reach, so it can block creatures with flying, which in this set in particular is very, very important to note. Uh, there are a lot of flyers in this set. It is its own archetype, and it's very, very good. Uh, this is a really great 5-drop. Uh, I found this to be a really good stall for the game. It's not necessarily the most aggressive card, uh, because it does only have 3 power, and as a 5-drop, you'd kind of want it to have a little more than that, but uh, it is still a really, really nice card for kind of clogging up the board, slowing the game down a little bit, which is generally green's kind of thing. They want to go wide, they want to get a bunch of tokens out, and then eventually drop a big bomb that kind of swings in and does a ton of damage. This is a great card to help you get there. Uh, absolutely love it. I still like the Brawler more. Uh, it's a little bit more aggressive, obviously, and in draft, generally speaking, you want to be pretty aggressive. Uh, and so I like this card quite a lot, but not better than the Brawler. Uh, Griffin Sentinel is a 1-3 for 2 and a white. It has Flying and Vigilance. Uh, this is a really interesting card just because it's good, but I feel like it kind of shouldn't be, only because it has only one power. Uh, I found it to be very, very good, though. It allows you, because of that Vigilance, to swing in under conditions that you normally wouldn't be able to. Uh, and because it's a flyer, it is evasive just on the onset. And so uh, there are a lot of like 2-1 flyers and 1-1 flyers. There's like Fairy Miscreant, there's the Cloudkin Seer, things like that. Uh, a lot of those cards just make it really nice to have a 1-3, which uh, not only can beat them in combat uh, in terms of their toughness to this creature's power, but it has enough toughness to survive that attack as well. A lot of upside to this. Uh, and so I, I actually really like it. Just a pinger in the air is good. 
don't like it more than the brawler still i think that brawler is really really good uh and so it's tough to beat it on the common level at least but still a very good card uh growth cycle really interesting combat trick it's an instant for one in a green and target creature gets plus three plus three until the end of the turn but it gets an additional plus two plus two uh for each card named growth cycle in your graveyard uh, cards like this where they're dependent on the number of them in your deck are really nice to pick up early because you can get a lot of them and start doing just tons and tons of work uh, depending on what the card does. In this case, obviously, it is just a combat trick, but if you have enough of them, it's a really, really good combat trick. And honestly, for two mana, it is pretty efficient regardless. Excuse me. Even if this is the only one in your deck, it's still plus three, plus three for only two mana at instant speed. I like that a lot. I think it's very good. So I like this card. It is still just a combat trick, though. I do not pick combat tricks early. I tend to get them very, very late in the pack, uh, mid to late in the pack, depending on what the pack has to offer. Uh, and so I would pass on this unless I was in green already and really, really just needed some, some interaction on the board. Uh, pack Mastiff, uh, speaking of cards that require named cards, uh, is a 2-2 two -two for one in a red, and then you can pay one in a red, and each creature you control named Pack Mastiff gets plus one plus zero until the end of the turn. So it's sort of like more expensive, but worldwide fire breathing uh, if you have more than one of these out. Uh, again, a very good two drop. It's perfectly fine. If at the very least, it's a 2-2 two -two for two that pumps itself for only two mana. I like that. I think it's worth it. Uh, I still, I, it encourages aggression and encourages, encourages you to pick it early so you can get multiple copies, but that Lava Kim Brawler, not only with just the fact that it has that little bit of a combo, but also is just in itself such an aggressive card. Uh, it's really, really hard to beat that, especially on the common level. And I just don't think this does. So I would still pass over it so far. Uh, Soul Mender is a one, one for one white and you can pay one, or excuse me, you can tap it and you gain one life. I found this to be kind of just mediocre. Uh, it's a one, one for one, so I guess it's there on value, and it does have the ability of gaining you life, but it tends to die very quickly. There's things like, there are a lot of like one ones and one twos in this set, so it's not like this is going to really be swinging in. Not that you would want it to, it is there to gain you life, but uh, it's a very slow way of gaining life, unfortunately, and I found it in certain occasions, it can save you a little bit of time and hopefully make sure that you stay in the game, but... Lots of times that incremental life gain like this doesn't tend to get you there. What you really want are creatures that are sticking, that are doing multiple points of damage or gaining you multiple points of life. This gains you one per turn, maybe, uh, if it sticks around, but it just isn't that big of a threat by any means. Uh, Vial of Dragonfire is an artifact for two mana. You can pay two and tap it, sacrifice it, and it deals two damage to target creature. Uh, I found this to be an okay removal spell when you just don't have any other option. Uh, it does go into any deck. It's very flexible in that regard, and I like that. But it is very expensive to only deal two damage to a creature, and it is only to a creature, which in itself is a bit of a downside. Uh, if you're really light on removal, then go for it. It's a nice thing to have just available to you to be able to, to, to shock a creature. Uh, but in general, it's not a very powerful card. There are so many better removal spells in this set for sure and speaking of which agonizing siphon uh is a sorcery for three and a black and it deals three damage to any target and you gain three life so not only does this gain you a few more points of life but it also deals three damage to either an opponent or a creature or even a planeswalker it can be any target which is great uh and so honestly this is such a better removal spell than the vial uh, I don't know if it's better than the Brawler, uh, if I'm going to be honest. I don't necessarily think it is. Uh, I've seen these go a little bit later than I expected them to on the onset, but they do kill quite a number of things. Not everything, unfortunately, but uh, it is still a really nice card. I'm going to keep it with the Brawler for now. We'll see what we think at the end of the pack. Uh, Veil of Summer is an instant for one green. Draw the card if an opponent has cast a blue or black spell this turn. Spells you control can't be countered this turn, and you and permanents you control gain hexproof from blue and from black until the end of the turn. This is what you define as a hate card. So, sideboard, obviously, it's only good in the sideboard because you're not always going to be up against a blue or a black deck. However, against a blue or a black deck, pretty good. Not amazing. If I'm going to be honest, I don't really love it, but it is a one mana draw spell at the very least. So, it's not terrible. Um, I honestly. <sighs> I have never found myself playing this card. 
I've also never seen it played, so I don't know that it's actually very good. Uh, but it is very defined as a hate card. We've seen a lot of these in this set in particular, a lot of like color hate and stuff. Very, very cool. I like stuff like that. It makes for great sideboard options, but this honestly is one of the worst ones in my opinion. <clears throat> uh, Noxious Grasp is an instant for one and a black destroy target creature or planeswalker that's green or white, and you gain one life. Again, very, very similar to Veil of Summer very much focused on green or white and you're not going to be playing against green or white all the time so it's not worth it to main board but a very very powerful sideboard card much much better than veil of summer for sure uh definitely something that you would want to pick if you're in black but it's not first pickable solely because it's not good against every deck you'd much rather have this against a green or white deck obviously but if it's a dead card against half the decks not really worth it so definitely pick it up later in the pack but not worth it to pick super early uh, Might of the Masses is an instant for one green, and target creature gets plus one, plus one until the end of the turn for each creature you control. I actually have found this to be a really, really powerful combat trick, especially because it is in green. There's a lot of token synergies, things like that. Being able to go wide is pretty easy, and games tend to stall out just a bit, so you tend to build a big board until somebody can kind of break that. Uh, Might of the Masses might be the card that helps you break it. That being said, it is still a combat trick. It's not something that I'm looking to play, uh, or excuse me, pick super early because it is just a combat trick. So I would rather be in that defined kind of token go wide strategy before picking up this. But if I'm in that deck, definitely interested. And then our rare here uh, is Lotus Field. So it's a land, it does have hexproof and it enters the battlefield tapped. When it enters the battlefield, you must sacrifice two lands. Uh, but it does tap for three mana of any one color, so it's very similar to Black Lotus. This is one of the cards that when spoiled, people went mad for. Uh, it is a really cool card, too, and there's a lot of really cool stuff you can do with it. I don't think it's worth it at all in draft. Uh, there's very little ways you can get around that sacrificing two lands, and I just don't think it's worth it. Uh, and in this draft in particular, in this set in particular, it's really important to try and curve out as much as possible. Uh, and just stay on curves, keep hitting your drops, <clears throat> excuse me, and keep playing threats. Uh, this doesn't allow you to do that. Uh, it just, it takes turn three off generally, uh, if you even play it on turn three. Late game, it's fine because you can probably afford to sacrifice two lands, but by that point, you kind of don't need it. Uh, and so there's really not a whole lot you can do with it, in my opinion. It's a good rare for constructed when you're looking to do some very janky kind of things, but in general, not super exciting and then we have a swamp and then of course these new tokens which look fantastic absolutely love these uh but to me it's between the agonizing siphon and the brawler i think i would lean towards the brawler uh agonizing siphon is a very very powerful card absolutely leaves you more open as well because you're not as pinned into the elemental strategy but this is just such a good payoff that it's really really difficult to pass it uh so i think that's what i would pick Feel free to let me know in the comment section below if you disagree. Uh, I am happy to have that conversation. But if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. Also, really quick, please do check out our Patreon. We have our new rewards coming out uh, in August. We have Ella Schnorn as well as Karn Liberated. So some pretty awesome altars for you guys. If you're interested, the link down below will take you right there. You can look at all the information. If you have any questions, please let us know. So with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack episode.